Hello, I'm Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. If you are a beginning at beginner at sewing and you want to learn just a little bit about quilting, one of the first things you need to learn is how to cut your fabric. So I'm going to show you an easy method to speed up the process of cutting your fabric. Now I'm going to go over the tools you will need. You're going to need a 24 inch ruler. Now these come in a variety of sizes. I recommend you either get a six and a half inch wide ruler or an eight and a half inch wide ruler. This one is eight and a half. Then the other thing that you will need is a rotary cutter. I recommend either a 45 millimeter or 60 millimeter. This is the 60 millimeter. And then the final thing you're gonna need is a cutting mat that is designed for using your rotary cutter. It's a very sturdy mat. I don't recommend you put cardboard on top of your beautiful dining room table because that rotary cutter will go right through it. So you need this type of mat. They also come in a variety of sizes. Okay, after you've purchased your fabric, you want to pre-wash it. But before you pre-wash it, you need to do a zigzag stitch on each end of the fabric. After you do that, then go ahead and wash it, put it in the dryer, press it out really good, get all those wrinkles out, and then you need to fold it in half, bringing your selvage edges to selvage edge, and smooth out the fabric really good. Then you need to cut off those zigzagged edges. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to take this edge and put it on the fold line. That's that folded area is the closest to me. Okay. Now if you are right handed, you're going to be on the opposite side of me. So line it up really good across there. And then take your rotary cutter. Press firmly down on the ruler and then I'm not going to open my rotary cutter because I'm just going to demonstrate. You're going to slowly move that rotary cutter, especially if you're new. Then when this gets to the near the ends of your fingertips, lift your hand and cut some more. Lift your hand and cut some more. The reason why you don't want to just leave your hand here and, and cut really quick is your ruler will shift. So then you'll have a big mess. All right, then the next thing you want to do is lift your fabric and flip it to the other side. Okay, smooth out your fabric, make sure the raw edges are together, and then cut off that other side where your zigzag stitches are. Now your fabric is ready to be cut. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to cut a six and a half inch square. So what I did was I took a sticky note, you can use a piece of tape, and I put it on the six and a half inch marker line. And the markers are up here. This is up here, it tells you which each line is. So I put that on there, then take this line and lay it on the raw edge of your fabric. Line it straight up and down there, okay? Once you've got it lined up, then again, press firmly down on your ruler and slowly cut, lift your hand, cut, lift your hand, and cut. Now you have a strip cut out. Now I've already got one cut out, it's over here. The next thing you want to do is lay your strip out this way and line up all those edges really smooth. And then you're going to cut off these uh, selvage edges. So you want to line up this side of your ruler and this marked line that I have on here. Okay, line it up straight across, then take your rotary cutter and cut. Okay, then after you've cut it, just throw it away, you don't need it anymore, flip it over, smooth out those edges again. Okay, then as you'll see here on my ruler, I've marked six and a half inches this way and six and a half inches this way. So you can see where your square is. Then take this side and these two marked edges, 
lay it at the end, okay, and line it up nice and straight. Then take your rotary cutter and cut. Then move this out of the way, line it up again, just like you just did on the first one, line up all those edges, and then cut it again and go all the way down to the end of the strip. By the time you would have cut your first strip out, you would have had six, six and a half inch squares. Now, there's something called stacking. And what you would do is, is you would take two of these strips, make sure that the selvage edges are cut off on both ones, and you just line up your fabric really good, then take your ruler, lay it down at the end, and begin cutting just like you did. And instead of having six, you now have 12 in a lot less time. Okay, now that you've seen how to cut a square, let me go over how to cut out a rectangle. And we're gonna go back over to our fabric over here, and we're gonna cut out a rectangle. Now, we're gonna cut out a shape that's four and a half inches by eight and a half inches. So I'm gonna cut my strip eight and a half inches wide and my ruler just happens to be eight and a half inches so I'm going to take this edge put it on the raw edge and then cut it out again all right now I've got one cut out already over here I've already cut the selvage edges off okay line it up really good now you can see I've got my lines all marked so I know exactly where I should be and lay it down here at this end and if you're right-handed you're going to be on the opposite side and then cut and then move it out of the way line it up again and cut again and by the time you are done you're going to have eight of these pieces you can also do stacking with this but remember don't stack too much well i hope that this was helpful for you now if you need to learn how to cut out your quilt binding I have two videos on that. One is for straight edges. It's called straight grain binding. And the other one is for curved or rounded edges. And that's called bias cut binding. Now, my next video will be how to cut out or make, I should say, this whimsical Christmas table runner that I call peppermint candy and I think you can see by looking at it why I call it that. Now to keep informed on all my future videos click on subscribe. It's that bold word down there at the bottom of your YouTube screen on your PC. If you're looking at this from an iPad it might be off to the side or up on the top somewhere. Click on that YouTube will prompt you for your email address after you enter that and the next time I have a new video comes out YouTube sends you an email with a big button in the center you click on that button and it takes you directly to my latest video I'm Cheryl I'm really glad you came to my sewing room see you next time and happy sewing